Five ways you can compare Verstappen with Senna. Max Verstappen recently won his 41st race, equaling him with the legendary Artem Senna. F1 has a large range of legends over each decade, but none of the goats from the past come as close to Senna as Max Verstappen. So here are five ways to compare Verstappen to the legend that forever will be Artem Senna. I'm Wimbo, here's three seconds to leave a like. Five, extreme talent. Artem Senna and Max Verstappen both stepped into a cart before they were six years old. Senna's dad turned a lawnmower into a cart and Jos Verstappen actually wanted to wait a little bit with his boy until he was a little bit older. But young Max wanted it so badly, Jos asked his mom and Sophie said it was okay and that's how it started. Both drivers won everything there was to win, even if they were years younger than the boys they raced against. Artem Senna moved to open wheel racing in 1981 and lived in a place called Tylehurst in England. He won the 1983 British Formula 3 title, beating Martin Brundle in the process. He also won the legendary Macau Grand Prix race, which is renowned for its huge crashes. Previously, he'd won the European and British Formula 4 2000 titles, and that put him on the radar of many teams in F1. He tested for all the big teams, but none of them had a seat for him, so he signed for Tolman, a backmarket team. He made such an impression that season, he raised himself to his seat with Lotus for 1985. Max Verstappen raced for Van Amersfoort Racing in European Formula 3 in 2014. He won 10 races, but not the championship. Esteban Ocon won the championship, but Max Verstappen showed so much talent that Mercedes and Red Bull wanted to sign him for their junior program. Verstappen picked Red Bull. The following year, Verstappen made his debut with Toro Rosso. And five races into 2016, he was promoted to Red Bull, winning his debut race with them in Spain. The two of them walked a different path to get into F1, but the buzz around them couldn't be denied. Four, uncompromising driving style. Arden Senna and Max Verstappen received a fair share of criticism for the way they drove their cars, taking risks other drivers wouldn't and not being shy of banging some wheels here and there. I'd say neither of them were dirty drivers, however, the media thought otherwise. Arton Senna had a famous interview with Jackie Stewart that delivered one of the most iconic quotes ever spoken in Formula 1. Stewart, who was a spokesman for more safety in F1, criticized Senna for all the collisions he'd had in the past few years and wanted him to change his driving style. Senna said, And if you no longer go for a gap that exists, you're no longer a racing driver. This to me refers to his McLaren teammate and nemesis Alain Prost, who was called the Professor. He didn't mind calculating to finish P5 or P4 and studied tire degradation more than hard racing. This was typical for Senna, who was told to slow down in Monaco once as his lead was big enough, but he just couldn't and crashed. This attitude gives me goosebumps. Max Verstappen annoyed every single driver on track by never allowing anyone to pass him easily. Every time they thought they were rid of him, he was still there, not giving up. Verstappen operated on the edge of what was allowed when moving on the straights. So much so, a new rule was introduced, which was called the Verstappen rule, until the rules were changed slightly again. He received lots of flack from the media, as they weren't used to young drivers defending like mad when they really had nothing to win. Max just did it for the vibes. I wish the rookies nowadays had the guts to do what he did. Every time a faster car approaches, they almost move aside, saying, oh, that's not my fight, let's look after the tires. The Brazilian and Dutch icons fought many battles on track and were never shy of some wheel banging. They heard the criticism, but it fell on deaf ears because this way of driving gained them more points and reputation than a more conservative style would have given them. This is why they were so entertaining to watch. And this is how they will be remembered. 3. Rainmasters Rain, the great equalizer. Some of the most mesmerizing drives ever in Formula 1 have been in wet conditions. A driver can't be called an F1 superstar without a few amazing drives in the rain. At Monaco 1984, Senna drove for backmarker team Tolman, and in only his sixth race, he started from P13 and finished P2. Because of the pleading from Prost to race control to stop the race worked. It was clear to everyone that Senna was the quickest man on track, even in that slow Tolman TG184 heart. Alain Prost kept waving his arm out of the cockpit to race director Jackie X, and after the rain got heavier, he stopped the race. Prost won, 
but Senna made an everlasting impression. At Brazil 1991, Senna drove in the rain with a car that was stuck in 6th gear. He could barely lift the trophy after that race. Artin Senna never won his home race before that day, and with the mechanical problems he had, it looked like it wasn't going to happen that day either. This time, it was Senna waving to race control to halt the race as the rain got heavier, but with his car in 6th gear, he finished the last two laps in excruciating pain to win his home race for the first time. The lap of the gods was Senna's biggest performance in the rain. The 1993 European Grand Prix took place at Donington Park in England. On the first lap, Senna went from 5th to 1st, overtaking the likes of Prost in the process. This is still regarded as one of the most epic drives in the wet. Max Verstappen showed his stuff as a teenager at Brazil in 2016. After a wrong tire choice by the team, he found himself last on the grid. He went to overtake everyone and anyone, making drivers like Nico Rosberg look like a rookie. He kept driving different lines and found grip where no one else dared to drive. Max Verstappen also won the 2019 German Grand Prix, a ridiculous race where everybody kept spinning and sliding, even Verstappen himself, who was fitted with medium tires that were way too hard for the conditions on the track. Leclerc, Bottas and Hamilton all went off. Nico Hülkenberg was on his way to a podium and then went off too. There's something magical about wet races. The spray from the cars and the peril it causes. Both Verstappen and Senna loved those conditions. And so do we. Two. Off-track aggression. Artin Senna and Max Verstappen are well liked amongst their peers. Max is being described as very relaxed and easygoing by teammates, former teammates and competitors alike. Senna always used a soft and soothing voice to talk to his peers and he is an example for them to this day. However, both drivers have been involved in scraps off track as well as on track. Two incidents that they were punished for stand out. Let's start with Verstappen. Max Verstappen was comfortably in the lead of the 2018 Brazilian Grand Prix when Esteban Ocon was fitted with new tires and was a little quicker than Verstappen and was given the go ahead to unlap himself. Max being Max didn't really allow that to happen. So a little fight was going on until Verstappen passed him on the outside of a turn and naively thought Ocon would back off. Ocon was still there, they collided and Verstappen lost the lead and therefore a win. After the race, Verstappen confronted Ocon and he didn't really get the response he wanted and pushed him and called him names a few times. Max Verstappen was handed a two-day public service penalty. He had to attend the FIA International Steward Program in Geneva. Arten Senna was given a penalty after an incident with Eddie Irvine. Eddie Irvine, the rookie from Northern Ireland, raced for Jordan at the Suzuka Grand Prix in 1993. Towards the end of the race, Senna lapped him, but Irvine decided Senna was going too slow, so he unlapped himself, forcing Senna to take risks and overtake Irvine. Then, a little while later, Irvine unlapped himself again. This really angered Senna, as he felt that backmarkers shouldn't interfere with people at the front. After the press conference, where Senna spoke about how angry he was with Eddie Irvine, he retired with Gerhard Berger for a few drinks. Now Gerhard Berger is known for being very mischievous and most likely riled Senna up to look for a confrontation. This happened when Senna found Irvine on the massage table and a fight unfolded, ending with Senna hitting Irvine several times. Senna received a suspended two race ban and Eddie Irvine received eternal fame. Don't you just love it when tempers flare? 1. Controversial Championships Looking at the trending topics on F1 Twitter, the 2021 Abu Dhabi Grand Prix is still fresh in people's minds. A little bit too much if you ask me. The way Arden Senna won the championship in 1990 is perhaps a little less known, especially for the younger people watching this video. It all started in 1989 when Prost and Senna, both driving for McLaren, were fighting for the title. Prost and Senna came together in Suzuka, Japan and Prost won the title. A year later, Senna and Prost were at it again and this time they didn't even make it through turn 1. Arden Senna was already triggered due to the fact that race control had changed the P1 position to the dirty side of the track and not long after the start they crashed and evil tongues reckon it was deliberate on Senna's side. No action was taken and with both drivers scoring no points Senna won the title. Max Verstappen won his first title in 2021 in a season that started with controversy and ended in controversy. The whole season Australian race director Michael Massey 
made decisions that were more in the spirit of racing than the actual rule book. From a late red flag in Baku after Verstappen had a puncture to the request to give positions back rather than slapping five second penalties on drivers. At the last race Hamilton and Verstappen were equal on points after an eventful season. The leadership in the standings changed several times and many events led to them being tied on points, including decisions from race control. Verstappen had managed to put the car on pole, however it was on soft tires. Hamilton started on the harder medium tires but managed to jump Verstappen at the start. The young Dutchman however made a lunge down the inside of turn 6 which saw Hamilton take evasive action but cut in the whole corner as well. It was said he gave the advantage back but it's unclear where he did that. Five laps before the finish Nicholas Latifi crashed and a safety car was deployed. This process took a little longer due to one of the engines catching fire. Mercedes was hoping the race would finish behind the safety car. Red Bull was hoping for 3.2 miles of racing action all the way to the checkered flag. Masi listened to the idea of Jonathan Wheatley and left a few cars behind who weren't allowed to unlap and the safety car was called in quicker. Young Max Verstappen didn't fail when he set after Hamilton and surprised him with an overtake at turn 5. Mercedes not happy, Red Bull delighted. As you can see with the 5 things I pointed out in this video, Max Verstappen has a few things in common with the late Ayrton Senna. I do realize that some people might find it sacrilegious to compare the two, but nowhere in this video I'm saying that Max Verstappen is the legend that Ayrton Senna was. Max Verstappen has a long way to go before he reaches that status, and perhaps it's better if he doesn't. Subscribe. Take care now. Doodoo. -doo.